In this video, we're going to program a binary tree. We're continuing with the Computer Science 9618 A-level curriculum, topic 19.1, which is algorithms. This is the last one we need to learn how to program, which is a binary tree. Now, all binary trees have three items, data, left pointer, and a right pointer, every item on the tree. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our own custom data type, and we do that with public structure. Now we're going to call our public structure tree node because every node is going to have data. Now our data is going to be composed of uh, names. You could do it with numbers, and if it was numbers, you would just change it to integer because remember, uh, you cannot compare numbers on equality if there are of string data type. Then every item also has a left pointer, and every item also has a right pointer. Now, there are a whole bunch of variables we're going to need, so let's skip ahead and talk about the variables we're going to need. Okay, starting with our variables, we have our constant null pointer, which is set to zero. The reason it's zero is because we are using index one in our array, and that is where we are starting. If we started with index zero, I would have to change my null pointer to negative one. It is constant, it is never going to change. That's why we have it set as a constant. We have our root pointer, we need to know where our binary tree starts. That, of course, is an integer. We have the free pointer knowing where the next free item is in our binary tree. And then we have the items in our binary tree. We have that set to as an array with a in max index of seven. We're going to do index one to seven. And every item in the tree has data, a left pointer, and a right pointer. That's why we have it set to tree node. That way we don't need three separate arrays. Using three separate, ar separate arrays could make this a lot more complicated than it needs to be. We need to have the new item a string. We're working with names, so we need to be able to record each new name. We have new node pointer. We need to know where it goes. The node that we're currently working with and the previous node that we were working with because when you add one item, the first item to the tree, the left and the right pointer are both null values. And you'll see that when we actually program or run the program in a few minutes. Well, when we add an item, we need to update the previous node pointers and then we have turn left. Now, the only, the only reason I have turn left and not turn right is because if turn left isn't true, well, then obviously we must be turning right. So rather than having two Boolean values, we can work with one. Let's jump into the sub main and take a look at the menu. Just like all the other menus we've done, we have choice that we have declared as an integer, and that is so they can make the choice, which is uh, build the tree, traverse the tree alphabetically, or to exit the program. Now we're going to throw in a console.clear so when we're done building the tree, we can traverse it and make sure it work comes out alphabetically. We're going to go ahead and put what the root pointer is, reminding us that we are using and starting with index one. When you update this program to test uh, how binary trees work, maybe you want to change it to negative one. Well, if you change that and forget that you change it, this will just be a nice reminder to see what you're working with. Because if you start using index zero, but you leave your root pointer at zero, your binary tree isn't going to work. So then we're just going to build the tree. Now we're going to enter our list of names every time the program runs. We're going to traverse the tree alphabetically, and that is making sure that the binary tree works like it should. And then, of course, we can exit the program. We're going to record, uh, record the choice. Now, if one, we're simply going to call build tree. We're going to call that. And then if they type in two, then we're going to set the this node pointer to our root pointer, and then we're going to test the order and pass down a copy of this node pointer. So that's why we're doing that. We're going to loop until choice is three. So that's going to be it for our main sub. I'll allow you to pause here and get this down. Our build tree is going to hold the bulk of our code. So we're going to go through this nice and slow. So we're going to build our tree. And here is where we start the tree. Now, when we start our program, nothing's going to be in the tree. So we need to set our root pointer to our null value, which is happening right here. Now, because nothing is there, we're going to set our free pointer to index one. So our free pointer is one. Then we need to set all the left pointers of our tree 
to the next open space in the binary tree. So we run a simple for loop for i equals one to seven, because remember we are not including index zero. And then for tree i, we're gonna set the left pointer equal to i plus one, pointing to the next item in the tree. Let's pause here before moving on. This is our for loop where we left off at. So what we're gonna do is we need to set the last node to a null pointer because the last node in our binary tree cannot point to anything because there's no more room. So all we do is tree index seven, we're gonna set that left pointer equal to a null pointer. Now we need to add the seven items. This is where the most of our code starts to take shape. So we're gonna run a for loop for our i equals one to seven. So we simply do a prompt what item would you like to add? And we're gonna store that in new item. Now remember, the new items we are using are names. If you wanna use numbers, that's fine. Just go back and change new item and the data to integers. You cannot compare numbers using strings. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna come out uh, correctly. The next thing we need to see is, do we have space in the tree? Do we have space in the array? And if our free pointer is not equal to no pointer, then yes, we have space according to this line. We need to take the node from our free spaces. So we take our free pointer, we assign that to the new node pointer, and then our free pointer is gonna be equal to our tree, free pointer dot left pointer. So there's a lot going on here. We're taking our tree, we're taking the part that has the free pointer and we're assigning the left, its left pointer to the new free pointer. Now we need to record the data item because we updated the, uh, we need to record the data item, then we'll update the uh, pointers. So we take dot data, our new item, we're gonna store that into the new node pointer where the new item is going inside of our tree. But now we have to update the new low pointers for the item we just added. After I add the first item, when I add the second item, I need to update the null pointers because it will not be pointing to anything. So our new node pointer, the item we just added, we need to update its left pointer. We also need to add the new item's right pointer. We need to set those to null pointers. Once we do that, we need to check to see if the tree is empty. So if root pointer equals null pointer, then the root pointer equals new node pointer. Now that is in case the tree is empty. If it's not empty, meaning we've already added an item, we have to look for the new insertion point. So we take this node pointer where we're currently at, which is our root pointer, and then we make sure that this node pointer, which is our root pointer, is not equal to null pointer because if it's null, then, well, it's not going, it's not going to run. So we gotta make sure we're not at a leaf node, meaning we have some room to do it and we use a while loop here. So while this pointer is not equal to no pointer, we're gonna take this node pointer and set it to our previous node pointer. So there's a lot going on here. And binary trees can be very difficult to uh, program. Uh, to get it right on the first try would be amazing. It takes a little bit of uh, you know, working through, but you need to become familiar with this. Uh, this is not a program once and uh, be done and have a full understanding. It's gonna take time to look back and really uh, work through uh, the code. But anyway, we need to remember the current node because we're gonna need to update it. So we take this node pointer where we're at and we set that to the previous node pointer. Now, we're looking at the current node to see if it's greater than new item. If that is greater than the new item, meaning the new item is less than, it needs to go to the right. If the new item was greater, it would need to go, I'm sorry, if the item, new item is less than, it goes to the left. If the new item is greater than, it goes to the right. So if, it's, if the current node we're at is greater than a new item is less, then we follow the left pointer, just like we did in, in uh, class. Turn left equals true. This node pointer equals tree. This node pointer dot left pointer. We're updating that left pointer. If it's not, then we follow the right pointer like we did in class. Turn left equals false. This node pointer equals tree. This node pointer dot right pointer. We're up updating the right pointer as opposed to the left pointer. Let's pause here, allow you to get this loop. Ending our while loop, picking up where we left off, we have if turn left equals true, then tree previous node pointer left pointer equals the new node pointer. If turn left is false, then we update the right pointer to the new node pointer. We have to update the previous node that we were just at. 
Now, what I have here is a simple for loop, one to seven item, and I used X this time, just to show you that you don't always have to use I, you know, we used X, it's fine. Item X is, and then we output the tree data. We output its left pointer, we output the right pointer. That is all that we are doing so we can see it as it goes through. Let's pause here one more time. We're outputting item X, like item one is, item two is, and so on. Then tree one, two, three, four, all the way to seven. We're outputting its data. We're outputting its left pointer, and we're outputting its right pointer so we can see it update as we go through. Let's pause here, allow you to get this. And now we're going to simply test the order of our binary tree. We're gonna make a uh, parameter called current node. That's gonna be an integer and that's gonna pass down from our menu in our sub main. So we gotta check the left side and we're gonna output this every time. Now, because this is a recursive function, it's gonna call itself right here. This line is what makes it recursive. When it calls test order, it's gonna pass the tree with the current node we're at the left pointer back and it's gonna wind and unwind. So you need to have a basic understanding of how recursion works uh, in order to uh, understand what this code is doing. But it's a recursive function, all that means is that it calls itself. The first thing we gotta do is check the entire left side of the tree because we wanna output it in alphabetical order. A binary tree sorts data, but we need to do so by checking the left side of the tree. I know my lowest item is always gonna be at the bottom left of the tree. So we need to check the entire left side of the tree. Then we need to check the entire right side of the tree. Notice here, we're outputting the data. Now you're gonna see some spaces because of the unwinding that it does. So when we run our program, you're gonna see some names uh, together and some spaces separating uh, some names. And that's because of the winding and unwinding. So we're gonna check the left side. After we check the left side, we're gonna check the right side. And then we just pause so we can see the output. Let's pause here. And I mean, that's it for to test the order. That's it. So uh, let's pause here, allow you to get this code. The only thing left to do is run our program, build the tree, traverse the tree, and make sure it comes out alphabetically. Now, you don't wanna put your names in alphabetical order because then you won't know it's, if it's actually working or not. So we're gonna build our tree. We have our friendly reminder that our root pointer is zero. So we're gonna add Shane. Now, these are just a list of uh, made up names that I have here. Now, item one is Shane. Notice his left pointer and right pointer are null values. They are not pointing to anything. The next item we need to add will be Joey, just a made up name. Now notice Shane's left pointer is pointing to item two. Item two is Joey. Joey is less than Shane. How do I know that? Because J comes before S. That's what we mean by less than or greater than. Let's add another item, Stacy, which is greater than Shane. We should see Shane's right pointer update the left pointer should stay the same and Joey should still have null pointers. So here we have uh, Joey. Notice his pointers are still null. We added Stacy, her pointers are null, but notice Shane's pointer has, right pointer has updated to three. Stacy is greater than Shane. Both start with an S. So the computer looks at the next letter. T comes after H, so it's then greater than. So we didn't turn left, we turned to the right, going back to that while loop. So we updated the pointer three. What is it, item three? Item three is Stacy, which is greater. So let's keep adding items. So let's do Ezio, which is less than Shane and less than Joey. So this should go to the left of Joey and Joey's pointers should update. So here, Ezio's in item four. Notice Shane's left pointer is two. Joey's left pointer is four, pointing to Ezio. So we keep looking and checking to see if it's less than or greater than. That was the whole point of that loop. And then item five, we have Francesco. So we add Francesco. Who is pointing to Francesco? Ezio. Notice Ezio's right pointer is pointing to item five, and that's because Francesco is less than Joey, but greater than Ezio. And then we're gonna add Doug. Now Doug's 
left pointer and right pointer is zero, just like it should be. There's nothing in item uh, seven yet, and that's why we have all those, uh, we set the uh, pointers to our null value. Now, Doug's left pointer is zero. Let's see what it's pointing to Doug, and that would be Ezio. Ezio is greater than Doug. So Ezio's left pointer should be item six, and it is. And the last item we want to add is Suzette, getting something else on the right side. Uh, Suzette is greater than Stacy, so we should see Stacy's right pointer uh, update. Well, we didn't get to see it update because I hit enter uh, too many times, but that's okay. Let's traverse the tree and make sure that it works. Traversing the tree, it should come out in alphabetical order. First one is Doug. Doug was the lowest value that we had because we didn't have another name that started with the letter that was A, B, or C. Then we have Ezio and Francesco. Notice here we have some space and that is because we are using that recursive function. Notice we have another space. We have Joey. We're checking the left side of the tree. Now we need to check the right side of the tree. So we have Shane, which is our root node going back because we know this item is greater than all of the items on the left side of the tree. We know that these two items on the right are all greater than our root node where we started. So we have Shane, we have Stacy, we have Suzette, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, all seven names are there. They are all in alphabetical order, so it is working. I hope you found this program helpful. If you have any comments, please post one below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next video.